Look at that. A big giant crocodile. Let's move up here. Nice little jump, a little snook. In today's episode, we're doing a DIY bait trap and I break my curse on snook. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of CEO Fishing brought to you by The Real Hooker Bait and Tackle, Nines Optics, and Livingston Lures. In today's episode, we are using a soda bottle. I'm rinsing it out right now. I, I cut the label off already just because I'm not trying to promote, you know, any specific soda brand. Just the fact that you can make a bait trap or a fish trap out of a basic soda bottle that you can dig out of your garbage or something. I'm just dumping that out. And uh, in just a moment here, we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna show you how to turn this soda bottle into a bait trap. All right, so my wife has a nail in her tire, so She's pregnant, and uh, I'll be damned if I'm gonna let her drive around with a nail in her tire. Got my tools, and as soon as I plug this bad boy up, we're going fishing. This is extremely simple. All you need is the soda bottle, obviously, a knife to cut it, and something to puncture the holes. You can use the knife, but you know, I changed my wife's tire today and I said, you know what, this would actually be pretty good for puncturing the holes in the soda bottle. So uh, that's what we're gonna use today. Guys, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is cut right around this area. We wanna cut it all the way around so that we can take this piece off and I'll show you what to do right after that. But let's get started. Make sure you're careful with your knives, especially if you're younger, uh, if, you're, if you're a kid. Make sure your parents are around to supervise. I don't want anyone getting cut or injured during this process, but it is a fun and easy DIY for anyone to do. So let's see here. I'm going to, I want a little bit of space. See how this is curved? You guys see how this is curved right here? I want to have a little bit of gap or distance from where the curve stops to where I'm going to make the cut. All right, so I got the curve here. So let's go ahead and cut right about here. Don't, you don't have to rush nothing, you know, just try and keep it as straight as possible because that'll make it a lot easier when you're putting it together. So I'm just gonna slice around and I said keep it straight, but you know, obviously it's just flimsy plastic. So I'm just doing the best I can. And right there, so. This is what you should have now, right here. I'll show you guys, just boop, comes off. Why we're doing this is we want to reverse this and put it inside, just like that. And because I left that little lip, it actually gives a grip to hold the fish in the fish trap. So we're gonna take this off. Now we gotta cut around this angle here. It doesn't matter. I'm, it might have actually been easier for me to do this cut first, so I had something to hold on to. But either way, you need to cut there and cut here. So next step, I'm cutting here, but like I said, you can cut this first and then go for this section. Uh, it might actually be a little bit easier. But to get started, let me try and find a spot to put the knife in. We're catching smaller bait fish, so I'm gonna gently wiggle this in. And I don't want to cut too much, so I'm going to bring this angle back, put this lid on tight so I can grip it. This part you want to be really careful. You don't want to cut too much off. And I'll show you why. You just want to get the tip off, just like that. That's all you want to cut off. See the hole? Now the fish can swim in and out, but hopefully just in and not back out. Hmm, I like how this looks. The next step right here. The next step is to, once you cut the top off, you flip it and reverse it, and we slide this in. You don't want to go too far. You just kind of line it up with the edge here. And that's gonna be your bait trap right there. We still have another step I'm gonna show you, but I'm just showing you how it functions. So the fish go in, and when they're trying to swim back out, they're around the edge and they can't find the hole. 
which is a problem for some people. You can't find the hole. But that's what we want when we're trying to trap the fish. If you put it in just like this, the, the, the bottle is going to trap the air. So to prevent the air from being trapped, that's why I brought this. We're going to see if it works, but poke hole. Yeah, no, that's not sharp enough. So we'll go back to the first idea, just the knife. Just got to poke holes, not stuff that the fish can escape from, but we want them, the air to leak out of the bottle when we put it in the water. That way there's no bubbles for the uh, bottle to float back to the surface and you can sit it right on the bottom so the fish can swim in near the bottom of the um, water. Now I'm going to put a 360 degree camera into this bait trap. That way we can see fish actually swimming into it because you know a lot of people try and call us out, call me out for doing fake stuff. I don't fake nothing on this channel. This is all legitimate stuff. You know anyone who's uh, messed around with these types of traps can confirm that they actually in fact do work. But just for fun, for the S's and giggles, you know what that means. Uh, we're going to we're going to put the the camera inside. This should be good. This should be perfect, honestly. Let me close up the knife. Don't want to leave an open knife. Whoop. Let's close up this knife here. It's actually broken. I got to be careful because sometimes it holds. Sometimes you see that, and sometimes it doesn't. So always got to be super careful with the knife, especially the cheap ones. Um, my idea was I was going to put this in and do this like with the with the uh, tire of my wife's car this morning but you know I guess this part's not quite sharp enough but we got it done let's uh pop this in just like that right there and ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we got ourselves a fish trap guys the next step put some bait in drop it in the water and we're gonna catch ourselves some bait fish or aquarium fish or invasive fish or just cute little fish that we want to look at whatever your preference is in that situation that's what we're doing today stay tuned be right back i've decided that the 360 degree camera is not ideal for this um, simply because i gotta put the bread inside um, there's not that much space in there so i didn't want the bread to just be sitting on the lens so i'm gonna put my gopro inside the water I'll sit it just outside. I'll set this here. I'll have the GoPro aim just like this so you guys can see all the fish going into it. Let's get baited up and drop this bad boy in the water. All right, we got the Wonder Bread. Yes, we do. Boom. Right there. And I just, I don't want to squish it. I'm just going to dump some pieces in here, you know. And I'm probably going to throw it over here. So let me kind of chum up a little bit, get a little little crumbs in there to see if there's some fish shooting out because I want to make sure I drop it in a spot where there are actually fish. And a lot of times, if you guys can see down here, there's a lot of vegetation along the edge. A lot of times that's where the fish are going to sit. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of little, little jewel cichlids right here, African jewel cichlids. So this might actually be the spot that I'm going to put it in. Super easy to reach. I got bad knees, but I'll manage to get down there. All right, so we've got the bread in. A couple little crumbs. All right, we're gonna step here, try not to disturb the fish too much. Let's go ahead and turn my GoPro on. Booyah, I didn't even charge the GoPro. Let's tilt this up, because I wanna show you guys everything. Gently step in here. These fish are not shy at all. So uh, let's put this in the water. See how the bubbles are coming out? We don't want any bubbles. Look at that, right out the back where I plugged that up. I'm gonna set this right here. My GoPro just died. So the GoPro is a no-go. But there's already fish going into this. Let me just grab this real quick. I, you guys just saw this. I just put this down. I just put it down and there's already fish inside. So you can't tell me that this does not work. Holy crap. I literally just, just put this in. Look, 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 look. I know you see that. I know you see that. I know you see that. That's how fast 
That's how fast. That's how fast. I mean, one got out. I could have picked it up already. But that is how fast this works with these little cichlids. I didn't even have a chance to go change my GoPro or nothing. But you guys can see it clear as day that that thing is working. So, uh, mission's already accomplished. What I will probably do is, I see a peacock bass right there and then one right there. So I might just go to my um, truck and grab a fishing rod. But let's bring this up here and show you guys. Let's bring this up here and show you guys, look. Those are fish right there. Look at that. So I'm going to set these down while there's still some water in there and be right back. There you have it. There's four little jewel cichlids. I'm gonna drop this down, try and get some more because I saw some bigger ones there. And uh, I'm gonna go grab a fishing rod from my truck and we're going to see if I can catch a peacock bass or a largemouth bass or maybe even a snook on one of these fish that I just caught. There's a peacock bass cruising around. So we're gonna take the biggest one here. And all we're gonna do, put it right through the front lip. And we're gonna cast it out. He's chasing, whoop. Literally maybe a seven inch peacock bass. Oh, let the bigger one steal it. Oh, bigger one, got him, got him. <laughs> bigger one, but still tiny, still tiny. But that's how aggressive these little guys are sometimes. You know, there's days you can come out and they will not hit anything. And then there's days you come out and they absolutely smash everything. But despite being a little, little fish, he's uh, very beautiful. Throw him back in so he doesn't stay out of the water too long. But yeah, that's how we do it, man. Now I'm curious if there's more fish around here, like something a little bit bigger. I actually kind of want to feel a fight now. Maybe I'll take these to another location and try and catch some fish. I'll be back once I figure that out. Got one. Got him. Nice. Nice little jump. Getting bigger. Getting bigger. There you go, guys. Little peacock bass. I don't know what that is over there. Uh... There's bubbles coming around towards me here. I wonder if that's that big giant crocodile. Let's move up here. Whatever it was, was sitting right there. I am not effing around with that guy. That definitely was not a fish. There's still bubbles over here. So what's going on over here? Is it the croc? Is he under there? Well, whatever it is, it's sitting down at the bottom, not moving right now, because it clouded around, came right around. I still see some bubbles popping up in the middle there. So, I'm not messing with it. Oh, what was that? Oh, whoa. Look at that. Got me a snook. Ah. All right. A little snook. Beautiful, beautiful fish. He hit immediately. Go. I had to flip him out because I don't know what's in there. Look, there's more bubbles over there messing around. I'd say that's how you end a day of fishing. Damn. That was nice. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Catching bait, going to different locations, and catching fish, exploring different spots, and uh, just being outside is fun, you know? I actually have been trying to get a snook in this spot for a long time. I've hooked them many times, and I've had a curse. So somehow I managed to break that curse today.